Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. This bulletin is coming to you live from our studios here at Kokumlimle in Accra on digital address GA0993341 on Joy 99.7 FM. It's also live on Love 99.5 FM in Kumase, affiliates across the country on ABN Radio in London and around the world at myjoyonline.com. The news is brought to you by Telesol 4G, just a touch. And coming up, stranded students of University of Education Winneba appeal to government to intervene in the university's situation as they lament the impact of the shutdown on their studies. We are preparing to write our quiz next week, but looking at things, it's not going to happen, looking at the situation on ground right now. Um, we want the various authorities of the school and uh, the whole nation to, uh, to address this um, situation. Meanwhile, authorities insist the school remains shut despite claims by MP for the area for students to return. With NDC and NPP yet to meet over disbandment of party militia, we'll hear from NDC communications director as he hits hard at President Ekofado saying he's not committed to disbanding party militias. So after we need to take care of the cleaners, sure, sure, sure. and we're supposed to start organizing the religious organization. Exactly. Especially the Peace Council Chair. Exactly. For the first time, our inbox is sorted. <laughs> We'll bring you more as um, Sami Jemfi responds to the president's latest letter to the NDC's chair. Also in this edition, founder and leader of the Glorious Word Chapel, Reverend Owusu Bempa, storms offices of Radio XYZ with armed men threatening to kill Mugabe Masse. We have details. And in sports... We have a blockbuster to look forward to next month in the UEFA Champions League. After Manchester United drew Lionel Messi's Barcelona in the quarterfinal, there is also an all-English clash between Tottenham Hotspur and Manchester City. And with more than 200 days after first three of the first of three girls was kidnapped, Western Regional Minister designates hints of plans to combat kidnapping menace using technology. The kidnapping issue is not only a Western Regional issue, it's a national issue. What I decided to do was to help develop a simple mobile application that people can now use to um, check, especially taxis, whether they are really registered with the Assembly. We have all that and more coming up here on the Midday News with me, MFA Apau. Now, students of the University of Education, Winneba, have appealed to government to intervene in the university's situation, saying the shutdown of the school is affecting their studies. The Central Regional Security Council ordered shutdown to quell growing insecurity at the school. The students have staged four days of violent demonstrations to protest the dismissal of some 30 teaching and non-teaching staff. The Security Council gave the students up to 6 a.m. today to vacate the school. But as my colleague Roland Walker reports, many remain on campus because they either cannot afford transport back home or are unsure if the school has indeed been shut down following a counter-directive by the MP for the area, Alexander Afenyomaking. Many of them have packed their items, they want to go home, but more importantly, where they have to go is also a concern for many of them. I, I just want to speak to how have you been frustrated with the process so far? Very bad, very pathetic and uncalled for. You see, yesterday we heard the information through social media, not a school's website. It was around 3 o'clock p.m. that we had information. So, and we students, we read from the school's website and not social media. And as of now, this morning, they are not allowing us to go inside for our things. And students are stranded. We are here. They want to come. This, this place is a bus stop. We are, those who have packed already are trying to go. And the police too are asking us to leave the bus stop. And you can see rubber blades. I can't confirm whether there was live bullets, but the tear gas and rubber bullets, they threw at us. You see, and you were harmless and harmless students just singing and chanting. Why should they, is that how to control crowd, to throw tear gas, is that how to control crowd? It's going to affect our academics now, and no two ways about that. We have to say, we are preparing to write our quiz next week, but looking at things, it's not going to happen, looking at the situation on ground right now. Um, we want the various authorities of the school and uh, the whole nation to, uh, to address this um, situation situation as quick as possible so that we can continue our academic work. You heard there some students of the University of Education, Winneba, now president of the UEW chapter for the University Teachers Association of Ghana, UTAG, that's Dr. Frimpong K. Duku, says the situation could have been avoided. He's one of 30 lecturers who were sacked by the university leadership. We have several of them. Some were sacked, others were 
appointments were terminated, others were uh, uh, suspended, others were demoted. We have these categories of individuals home, amounting to about 30 of us. So depending on whatever they thought was your uh, uh, problem, they meted one of these uh, penalty onto you. So we have those that have been sacked, actually. You have not been affected? I, I have been sacked. That's why you are aggrieved? I'm not aggrieved because I have been sacked. I even agitated, started agitating, going to court before my team came. And my, the reason for sacking me is because I've gone to court, which is premised even within the, our act that whoever is aggrieved, because it's an, a, a corporate body, the university can sue, and somebody can also sue the university. So if the, the university has taken a decision that I believe was wrong, and I'm going to court for redress, can that lead to my sacking? So I have been sacked. So that's president of the EUW chapter of UTAG, Dr. Frimpong K. Duku. So as you're aware, even though the university says the school had been shut down, the MP for Futu, Alexander Fenyo Marking, has stated on his Facebook page that the students can return to school. Let's go live to the campus now and join my colleague Richard Kujunyaku, who has been monitoring events there. So Richard, what's the situation now because the MP says they should go back to school, but the authorities say that the school remains shut. What's happening now? Well, MFA, the situation on campus uh, is like um, when a bed even whispers, you will even hear. The, uh, the campus is very silent, is unusually silent, and unlike uh, what we know the EEW as it used to be. Everybody has been flagged out by the police here. They have taken their position. There are about uh, over a dozen of the police vehicles here. You see water cannons and other petrol vehicles here. Yesterday, the students had the counter directive from the MP for the area, and they decided to come back in the evening and in the morning, but they were, I mean, resisted by the security that were here. So, I mean, they are going by this. This morning, we had an interaction with the register of the university, and he insists that they are going by the regional security council directive. Mm, interesting. But are, are you able to confirm reports of the arrest of two students in connection with yesterday's riots? Yes, I can confirm. I was there with the regional police administration, the regional commander, and then they effected the arrest of two students who resist, I mean, who, uh, despite the directive, decided not to um, heed to the directive by the regional security council. And so they were arrested and sent to uh, the Rinba police station. They detained them. And then this morning, I'm told that they released them on bail. Mm. But let's uh, go back to the confusion, though. Uh, have we heard from authorities, really? Because we know that the Central Regional Minister was the one that announced the shutdown, whilst Alexander Fenyo Marking is also announcing that students can go back. So uh, how are students taking this, um, you know, directive from both sides? The students were confused. Uh, they didn't know what to do. They, I mean, it's just like a clash of authority. But the regional minister insisted, and has been granting interviews on various media outlets here, insisting that the regional security council is the highest decision-making body in terms of security matters. And the MP for the area is not even a member of the regional security council, so he has no locus in terms of what, I mean, the directive they gave. Uh, is, uh, as far as the directive they give is concerned. And so that is what it is. And the registrar of the school has affirmed this position, and they say that every student should leave. As we speak with you now, the registrar and the team here, the engineers and other people, are going around the campus assessing the extent of damage that has been caused to the property of individuals and that of the university as well. But did the regional minister give any indication as to what would happen to the MP for a future, uh, for counter-directing uh, what they have said? He has not said anything but uh, to say that, well, his directive still stands because his is backed by the Constitution. And so anyone who gives a counter direction, it's just like the person is on his own frolic. Mm. That's a Richard Kujunyako reporting from the University of Education, Winneba. Now, a Futu MP, Alexander Fenyomanking, is denying claims he's the mastermind behind the commotion happening at the University of Education. According to the MP, all his interventions in the matter on that campus has been to ensure the right thing is done in his constituency at all times. Raymond Akwa has more in this report. It all started when Professor Maoto Avocate took office as Vice Chancellor for the University in October 2015 replacing Professor Akwasi Asabri Ameyao, whose tenure of office ended in September that year. His appointment was opposed by people within and outside of the university, regardless of the fact that he had served two terms as pro vice chancellor. The member of parliament for the area, Alexander Afanyamakin, was believed to be the one behind this opposition to Professor Avoke's appointment. He explained that the new VC had been involved in the governance problems in the school as far back as 2013. Not long after that, one Supi Kofi Kwaira, suspected to be a front for the MP, filed a complaint, alleging 
financial and procurement irregularities against the avocate leadership of the school. In 2017, the Governing Council of the University asked Professor Avoke and four other top officials to step aside. Mr. Kwaira, Mr. Kwaira, whose lawyer was Mr. Afeyo Markin, obtained a judgment from the High Court which ruled that Professor Avoke and the school's finance officer, Dr. Teofilos Akoli, were guilty of procurement and other financial irregularities. The Supreme Court then quashed this decision by the High Court in Winneba later that year. Professor Avoke, who had been demanding reinstatement after the Supreme Court ruling, was later replaced with the current Vice Chancellor, Professor Afo Boni. The dust seemed to have been settling until the MP fell out with the current Vice Chancellor after the VC had started some reforms in the school, including the sacking of some lecturers. What broke the camel's back was the subsequent sacking of three influential lecturers for varying reasons including failing to cooperate with management and instituting legal action against the school. Alex Afeni Markin, who has been fingered by many as the architect of the confusion in the school, has been denying this allegation. issue of Allah falling out with him is neither here nor there. He is my friend, he is my priest. Avoka is my friend, he is my priest. Last week, we had a good dinner, we had a good discussion. I mean, it's not about personalities. Okay. But the issues going on in Winneba, the UEW, sometimes people get it wrong. But I don't really care about those who don't want to pay attention to reality. Ghanaians, sometimes we don't want truth. We are hypocritical about matters. But I want to remain firm on the issues. Yesterday, it was wrong. Today, it yeah. is wrong. That's Raymond Aqua's report. You're still listening to the Midday News here on Joy 99.7 FM. Let's head back to Accra away from University of Education winning because Joy News is learning the founder and leader of the Glorious Word Chapel, Reverend Owusu Bempa, today stormed the offices of Radio XYZ with armed men threatening to confront one of its presenters, Mugambi Masse. Let's speak to lead producer for Radio XYZ, Kofi Opong Asamwa. We're grateful for your time here on the Midday News. So what really happened today? Uh, welcome, MFA. Well, it was quite unfortunate it's around 10 a.m. when most of the early morning flashy programs will be ending. Around 10 a.m., that's the morning show from both uh, XY the Broadcasting and Empire FM, two sister stations on the same compound. Our receptionist came in uh, with the founder uh, of Glorious Reef Chapel, Reverend Osu Bempa, and some bodyguards around him. Well, they came in asking of Mugabe Masse, who is a staff of XY the Broadcasting and, of course, the host of uh, um, afternoon politics uh, show that is inside politics. And we wanted to find from Osu Bempa why he was actually asking for Mugabe Marse. And he said, well, Mugabe had already made some um, derogatory remarks about him uh, on radio, which is yesterday. And Mugabe has already threatened that he's going to sack him, Osu Bempa, from Ghana. And at least he's coming in for him to do so and also tell him that he should get ready because he's going to kill him. He said this emphatically, that we should read his lips. He is going to end the life of Mugabe Masi because he can't go about saying certain things about him which are totally untrue. He said this, and a lot of us were puzzled as to why Usu Bempa would make these comments. He left the office with his bodyguards just in the foyer of, of our office. And then some of the panel members of the various political issues that were in at that moment so to find out that if you threaten Mugabe and threaten to shut down a station, what authority, what powers do you have to do this? And he said, why should we even inquire or ask that question? And this brought a whole lot of altercation between the bodyguards of Osu Bempa and some of the uh, political show analysts that were in at the very moment when the whole uh, incident happened. Well, these bodyguards, about four mm-hmm. of them, and I was wondering why they were having pistols on them. They had... Um, communication traffic jammer on them, and you, you are heavily built. Trust me, if you see these men and they ask us of that, okay, so this is a man of God with these heavily built armed men around him. So yes. far, mm-hmm. nothing happened. They didn't, they didn't touch anybody, even though one of the bodyguards tried doing so. We strained him from touching or throwing his hand. Uh, no one was hurt, no property was vandalized. And as we speak now, we are the East Legon Police Station making official complaint to the police. Mr. Gofi, upon someone, uh, we are grateful for your time. But just before we let you off, we're told that some gunshots were fired. Are you able to confirm that? 
that is that is untrue. Okay. That is untrue. Okay, we're grateful. That's uh, Kofi Opon Samwa, his lead producer for Radio XYZ, bringing us up to speed on what happened this morning when founder and leader of the Glorious Word Chapel, Reverend Owusu Bimpa, stormed the offices with some armed men uh, threatening to kill Mugabe Masse. We'll be following that closely and bring you more in our subsequent bulletins. But away from that, it's been 22 days since President Ekofado issued a directive to the leadership of the governing NPP and opposition NDC to meet to discuss modalities on disbanding the apartheid to militias. That meeting is yet to come off as both parties fail to agree on a meeting date. Yesterday, President Ekofado disclosed he will go ahead with legislation on the issue as the parties prepare to meet. Private legal practitioner Kofi Bento says legislation is, ne- is unnecessary. It is not necessary. Indeed, it is futile. There are enough laws enough laws against this kind of activity and we need to appreciate something. Um, crime is determined from action. Okay, so if you call somebody a vigilante, it doesn't matter what they call themselves. If you call them a militia, it doesn't matter what they call themselves. If they take a certain action or do certain things that constitute a crime under our laws, you take them on. And what these vigilantes or so-called militias or whatever do, it's crime. And so you deal with them. And there are many laws to deal with that. That is number one. Number two is that in this country... The law does not allow anybody to constitute themselves into a private army, so to call. And what we are calling vigilantism itself, even though it has positive connotations, is illegal. Now, the president only needs to issue an executive order that says the law of this land is that only the police may undertake security operations within this country. And if they want or need to, they can get the army to support them under a clear command and control arrangement. To that extent, therefore, every state institution should make sure it strictly complies with that rule. And that is with reference to the National Security Secretariat, which takes certain groups into forces for their so-called operations. What that would do is that any time there is any kind of operation anywhere in this country, it is either the police or the police and the army or the police and some other institution that they are working with. You have a private legal practitioner, Kofi Bento, saying that legislation is unnecessary. But while we wait for the two major parties to meet over the disbandment of party militias, they keep accusing each other of not being committed enough. On news desk yesterday, NPP's national organizer, Samir Uku, said the NDC is not committed to dealing with the menace. Today, speaking on the same show, the NDC's national Communications Director Sami Jinfi says President Ekofado is not committed to disbanding party militias. He added that there are enough laws to deal with the menace and there is no need for new legislation as the President has directed the Attorney General to start work on. It's unfortunate because we expected the President to show a little more commitment to the issue of disbanding political vigilante groups in the country. And so far, we haven't seen any such you indication you, for the pre- from the president. You think the president saying that he has directed the attorney general, without prejudice to the outcome of your engagement, if any will happen, to prepare and submit to parliament as soon as possible specific legislation to deal with the phenomenon is not enough commitment? Not at all. You see, we in the end is welcome any genuine efforts aimed at ending this culture of political violence. And to that extent, we welcome any efforts aimed at introducing legislation to combat vigilantism. But my sister, the point has to be made clear. Political vigilantism is not legal in Ghana as we speak. It is illegal. And that is because we have enough provisions in our Criminal Offenses Act of 1960, Act 29, that deals with the phenomenon. What is therefore needed is not new legislation, but the enforcement of already existent legislation. We had the President of Ghana during the 2019 State of the Nation Address publicly stating that I have directed my party, the party he leads, the NPP, to write to the National Democratic Congress inviting them for a meeting till date, ask the new patriotic party whether they have written this letter to us. Well, they, they say they will do that. They were hoping to do it late yesterday or early this morning. The president gave them a period within which they needed to do it. He gave them one week, two of us. Do they take their president serious? Or do they think that this issue is a trivial matter which can be solved over the phone? The only people who are not committed to a multi-stakeholder engagement on this issue is President Akufo. And I'm asking. 
Communications Director of the NDC, Sami Jinfi. Well, it's been established that both parties have these groups working for them. If what this member of the Invisible Forces is saying is anything to go by. M MPP, they have Del Delta Force Invisible and the I in the MPP. And NDC, too, they have Azuka Boys, the Ox, and the Motor Riders, and the Bashaka. They are almost six or eight. So. Well, uh, meanwhile, board chairman of the National Theatre, Nana Fredria Jimano Friata, has said it is uh, non Ghanaian for political parties to unleash party tax on their opponents. His comment is in reaction to the recent political violence that rocked the Ayawasa West Wogon by elections, and he was speaking at an event organized by the Ghana Culture Forum to mark Culture Day yesterday. We're, we're the catalyst for civility. That what makes us human. It is the culture industry that makes that. So where are we in that mix? In making sure that, please, any of these uh, vigilante names, if you can remember, uh, Hawks, uh, the uh, Kandahar Boys, uh, all of those people, what is it that we're doing so that people recognize that this is not Ghanaian, where we're chasing each other and beating each other just because we're going to express ourselves on a ballot paper? That's Nana Fredra Ajimano Ferreta is the CEO of the National Theatre and our campaign to disband party militias now continues. You're still listening to the Midday News here on Joy 99.7 FM. Our top story, stranded students of University of Education Winneba appeal to government to intervene in the university situation as they lament the impact of the shutdown on their studies. Also, founder and leader of the Glorious Word Chapel, Reverend Owusu Bempa, storms offices of Radio XYZ with armed men threatening to kill one of his presenters, Mugabe. Gabi Masse. And still to come, and more than 200 days after the first of three girls was kidnapped, Western Regional Minister designates hints of plans to combat kidnapping menace using technology. The kidnapping issue is not only a Western Regional issue, it's a national issue. What I decided to do was to help develop a simple mobile application that people can now use to um, check, especially taxis, whether they are really registered with the assembly. Thanks for staying with us here on the Midday News. Let's do sports now with Ridwan Ibrahim Asante. Yes, we just had the draw for the UEFA Champions League quarterfinal today. And the pick of the pack, you know, is that draw between Manchester United against Barcelona. Also, Liverpool will face FC Porto. And for more, this was how the draw was captured by the UEFA team. First club drawn, AFC Ajax. Juventus. Ajax versus Juventus. And now it's Liverpool FC, the five-time winners. Porto. And Liverpool will play FC Porto. So now we have uh, Tottenham. Tottenham Hotspur. Manchester City. So Tottenham will play an English derby against Manchester City. Barcelona. So Barcelona. Manchester United. So Barcelona will play Manchester United. You know, wow. so a, a bit of clar um, clarification there, um, MFA. You know, the last draw was supposed to be Barcelona versus uh, Manchester United, mm -hmm. but it's now going to be Manchester United versus Barcelona because authorities in Manchester, the police here, are saying that they'll be, they'll be unable um, to have two teams mm -hmm. play at home in Manchester. That's the Manchester police. They can't control two teams, okay. you know, in the same week. So as a result, um, when City travel to Spurs, United will now play Barcelona at home so that the, the, the reverse fixture will now take place. Valid so reason. That's, Valid that's, reason. that's a country that plans. Massa. That's Ridwan with the latest from the world of sports. Now, Western Regional Minister designate Kabna Ochri Dakumensa has told Parliament's Appointments Committee that technology could be an effective tool to minimize cases of kidnapping in the region and other parts of the country. He explains many people are being kidnapped in his region sometimes by commercial vehicle drivers who are not known uh, to the Assembly, making it difficult for them uh, to be traced. We can listen to excerpts of that. Basically, um, the kidnapping issue is not only a Western regional issue, it's a national issue. You hear issues happening in the north, Aflao, Accra. Um, but what we are bringing to the table 
um, first and foremost, I believe that personal safety and security is one area we've been advocating that people um, are conscious of and take care of. Um, ever since the last incident of three young ladies being kidnapped, I believe that everybody had heard a cry of, from the Western region and it's a Kenita Grade metropolis um, in particular. Uh, on, my, on my side, what I decided to do was to help develop um, an application, a simple mobile application that people can now use to um, check, especially taxis, whether they are really registered with assembly, so that in case people bought these taxis and then something happens, we can trace. And then secondly, if these taxis are also not registered with assembly, we will be able to say that they are not um, rectified or they have not been verified and therefore they don't have to board. In fact, um, yesterday night I got a message that um, the test is running and if you want to check for taxis registered in the second Credit metropolis, all you need to do is to dial star 711 star 333 hash to take you to the menu. That's the Western Regional Minister designate Kwabina Otre Dakun. Mensa also appearing before the public uh, the appointments committee earlier today is a minister designate for OT region, Kwisi Ousu Yebwa. And he's told Parliament that um, his topmost priority will be to ensure that residents of the region uh, remain united with their counterparts in the Volta region. Now, a 13 year old boy has been bent to death in a fire which destroyed a number of shops at Asafu this morning in Kumasi. Emmanuel Akurugu, 13, was unable to to leave the room as the fire gutted the wooden structure in which he slept. Residents watched helplessly as he was consumed by the inferno. About seven shops in the vehicle workshop on Cliff were reduced to rubble. Nanaya Ojima has been following that in reports. Tears flow as residents watch police carry the remains of the deceased in a body bag. Eyewitnesses say mother of the deceased was on a routine morning exercise when the fire started. We all came out to meet the place on fire. One of the people staying here had tried salvaging his property. We told him to stop for us to seek for some help. The boy and his parents have been staying in this wooden structure close to the mechanic shop at Asafo. A man was sleeping when the fire started at dawn. He was trapped and screaming for help, according to eyewitnesses. They believe an early response by the fire service could have saved his life. We heard the boy shout as the fire kept on, but we could not help. Access to the room was all blocked. We kept calling the fire service, but they wouldn't come. The worst had happened at the time they got here. We tried asking them why they've taken so much time. One of them told us they were not the cause of the fire. Rather sad situation there at Kumasi earlier today. But if you've been following our Ghana Man series, you realize that um, it's been fun so far. Uh, it's a fantastic four tour. The first stop was Afajato and also at the Willy Waterfalls. And this man has been part of all the series. Uh, we can safely call him the ambassador for the fantastic four tour. Head of programs here at Joy FM, Mr. Kofi Ansa joins us in studio. How are you doing, Kofi? Like at my phone. Uh, my phone will have one. Ah, like okay. phone, so we are heading to Adana, so maybe you should speak Ghana instead no, that of Ghana. Yeah. <laughs> to your thing. Okay, that's good. So we are going to Ada, Treasure Island, tomorrow. Exactly. What are we to expect? <laughs> well, MFA, we are, we're ready. I mean, it's going to be lit. Um, we currently have about 80, you know, individuals who have registered. Mm -hmm. um, so we're ready. Um, we're setting off tomorrow at 7 a.m. at the... Kotoka International Airport car park. Um, it's just behind flying? the Shuffling okay. Station. Not yeah, we're not <laughs> flying. <laughs> we're going by, you know, um, two ST. We're going with two STC buses. Okay. Um, it's going to be just pure fun. Um, once we get there, we'll be ferried onto the island. Um, some of the activities listed, we it's Ghana Month, so we're definitely going to be having Pilolo okay. as part of our the games. We're having Treasure Hunt, a visit to the estuary. Um, you know, swimming, slides, volleyball, dancing competition, jet ski rides, crocodile pond viewing, mm. um, board games, karaoke, tag of joy, networking session. And then in the evening, we'll have a barbecue session. Wow. I mean, it's just going to be late. Is it too late to join? <laughs> Please, you can you can just give us a call. 0544336512. 
um, and just pay 280 CDs. Just 200 Ghana 280, 280, for just 280 for everything. 280. And okay. we're giving each individual a Joy FM t shirt. Wow. That's Kofi and Sa. Uh, take him for his word because it's going to happen tomorrow, Treasure Island. Please give him a call and get your tickets now. And, and we're going with you. We're going with Bennis. So if you care to see these <laughs> beautiful ladies, please come of, on board. Of course. You have to be there. And that's it for the Midday News here on Joy 99.7 FM. Please join us at the Treasure Island tomorrow at Ada. I am MFA Apau. Enjoy your weekend. Have a good afternoon.